Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shemer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, we're at a brand new week, which means we're starting a brand new tour portion. This tour portion is called Tetzave, and it means you are to order, and it starts in Genesis 27, verse 20, and that's the verse that we're going to be reading this morning. We're still dealing with all the the articles and the furnishings of the tabernacle, and this one begins with uh, with the the light that's in the tabernacle. So let's get started. In Exodus chapter uh, twenty seven verse twenty, it says, "Also you are to command Bnei Israel or the children of Israel that they are that they are to bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause." A lamp to burn continually. So this is talking about a command to make fuel for the menorah, that difficult menorah that Moses had a hard time grasping what it looked like, but Aholabab and Bezaliel knew exactly what to do and how to make it. So this was the fuel. They used olive oil uh, for fuel to light the lamp, uh, to light the menorah. So it reminds me of Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 when Yeshua says, you are to be salt and light. You are to be the light of the world. Yeshua declared himself the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. And before he left this world, he commissioned us and said, you're to be like me. You are to be the light of the world. I'm gone. So you're my light now. So, you know, back then, of course, they had no no um, halogen bulbs. They had no Edison bulbs. They had no form of electricity as we know it. And they had to burn things in order to have light, whether it's a wick on a candle or, or whether it's the you know olive oil used for fuel, whatever. They didn't have gasoline and kerosene and things like that. So uh, sometimes they used tar or pitch uh, in order to um, uh, soak in a material that they could light uh, and, and, and have light. So, you know, this oil, where does this oil come from? Well, it says... Also, you are to command B'nai Israel that they are to bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually. It comes from olives, not just regular olives. It's not like olives are cows and has teats and you milk, you know, the little olive to get the olive oil. No, you have to crush the olive oil. It's just like a grape. In order to get wine, you have to crush a few grapes in order to get olive oil for uh, pure oil for the lamp, you have to crush some olives. Now, this reminds me of the Garden of Gethsemane. You're like, okay, that's a far stretch. How does, you know, olive oil and Gethsemane, you know, where do the twain meet? Well, Gethsemane actually means olive press, and Gethsemane was the Mount of Olives. Uh, so you have the Mount of Olives, and you have near or on uh, uh, the Mount of Olives, you have the Garden of Gethsemane, and Gethsemane means olive press. And that is where Yeshua prayed before his crucifixion, and his sweat became as drops of blood. So it's as if this, this burden of the crucifixion, this burden of redemption he was about to endure, was crushing him just as an olive is crushed in an olive press, and just as the olive gives up and exudes its oil as it's being crushed, crushed. Yeshua began to, to let go of his sweat and let go of his blood as he was being crushed under the pressure of, of this event that uh, he was about to endure called the crucifixion. And um, so Yeshua, um, you know, Yeshua was giving us an example here. The oil we contribute to the gospel light comes from our troubles, trials, and tribulations. You know, everybody likes to, to, to talk about how great, you know, God is, how great Yeshua is, how great the Bible is, how fascinating, interesting it is. People like to talk about the glory bumps that they get when they listen to praise and worship music and when the Holy Spirit hits. Um, they they want to tell people how Jesus is going to solve all their problems and the Bible has the answer to all their problems. But they don't want to talk about the troubles, trials, and tribulations. That's when the rubber meets the road. That's the brass tacks. That's the important thing because... Everybody in this fallen world and in this life is going to go through troubles, trials, and tribulations. It's not going to be a picnic, a cakewalk, a walk in the park, tiptoe through the tulips. We're going to have troubles and trials and tribulations. 
What those people need to know is not false advertising. Sure, Yeshua is great. Sure, the Bible's true. Sure, it's great when you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't mean that you're going to live happily ever after, after you get saved. Actually, life is going to become more difficult because the world is going to be against you. It says, just as Je Yeshua said, just as the world hated me, it's going to hate you. You know, and if they love you and if the world loves you, then something's not right between us. So the, the point is not living a carefree life. The point is living a victorious life, living a life that's going to draw people to the Messiah. You know, I mean, we read stories all the time about brothers and sisters in, 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 in communist and Muslim majority countries and countries where uh, Christendom and the gospel and the Bible is banned and or restricted and believers are persecuted. They are continually day in and day out being crushed like olives, but yet the oil is exuding out of them and the light of God is showing. You know, I've heard of so many stories and read stories all the time of people who die for their faith in such countries. And what they say, you just couldn't think of on the fly. It had to be the Holy Spirit speaking through them. And what they say and what they do convicts the ones who are persecuting them and harassing them and about to kill them. And some of them convert as a result saying, hey, this this stuff that they're they're into, this stuff they believe, it's got to be real. You know, this is not how a normal person acts under these circumstances. And they see the light through the pressure that these, these believers are going through, and it changes their hearts and minds. That's what it does for the lost person. What it does for the saved person, it gives them the strength, the endurance, that if they encounter and have to endure the same thing, that's going to give them the fuel and the strength to burn bright and to, to, to overcome. And the, and the scripture says, those who endure to the end shall be saved. So we are the light of the world, and this is what it takes to be a light. It takes troubles, trials, and tribulations. We need to praise God and thank God for the, the troubles and trials and tribulations. Even James so much as says so in the first chapter of his letter. And in chapter two, it says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And it goes on, and let endurance have its perfect work so that you may be perfect complete. In other words, the total package, lacking nothing. And then it says, but if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all without hesitation and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So how do you be a light of the world? You endure like a champ the troubles, trials, and tribulations, and you allow yourself to be crushed so that the oil may come out from you, so that the so as a result, the the light that is in you will burn fervently, will burn hot, will burn high, will burn bright for all to see. And as a result, God will get the glory and people will come to the Messiah. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.